My name is Roshni Patel. I am a breast surgeon at Dartmouth-Hitchcock in Manchester and the New Hampshire State Chair for the Commission on Cancer. I am presenting the operative standards for 2020. Uh, this is a very brief overview of the standards um, and we are just presenting this in a very simplistic manner. So the important takeaway points from my presentation is that there are six standards. Four will be documented in the operative synopsis. Two will be documented in the pathology report. We should document the key elements of the cancer operation in the operative notes. A template form is preferred. Also, if an endpoint was not achievable, it must be documented in the operative summary as well as the reason why. The first two standards that I'm going to discuss is uh, for breast cancer. Standard 5.3 involves the sentinel node mapping for breast cancer. Um, key elements in the operative synopsis are that we should identify and remove all sentinel nodes. We need to identify the technique used, whether it's blue dye alone, technetium alone, or blue dye plus technetium. If there's any suspicious nodes that are palpated or look abnormal based on visual inspection, those should be removed as well and it should be documented. For any patient who has neoadjuvant chemotherapy and was found to have a lymph node with cancer prior to chemotherapy, we must document whether or not we were able to find the clip node biopsy site change. Um, sometimes we may not be able to identify the clip node, but the biopsy site change should be documented in the pathology report as this may alter surgical management. So the operative synopsis is shown here. So at the top, you can see what the standard op note synopsis is. And at the bottom, the oncologic synopsis is shown. You can see that there's a section showing um, the substrates in the non-neoadjuvant setting. Again, there's a choice of technetium and or blue dye. For in the neoadjuvant setting, dye plus technetium has been shown to reduce the false negative rate, so it's important to use both. We also need to identify that all colored and non-colored nodes are present that are present at the end of a dye filled channel are removed, and also that all radioactive nodes are removed. And if there's any palpable nodes that are suspicious, they should be removed. Um, if somebody, again, had a clip placed in a patho pathologically involved node, we need to um, say whether or not that's applicable and whether or not those lymph nodes are removed. There is an issue and the clip was not identified um, or the decision was made to wait for final pathology for biopsy site change, that should be documented. If a previously pathologically involved node was not identified either dur during surgery or final pathology, uh, typically the standard would be to do a completion axillary dissection. Standard 5.4 discusses axillary dissection. Um, we need to document the anatomic landmarks for the dissection, which include the axillary vein, latissimus dorsi, serratus anterior, and the chest wall. And we should identify and spare the long thoracic and thoracodorsal nerves and attempt to spare the inner costobrachial nerve. Um, on occasion, level three lymph nodes may need to be removed and we need to document why. So again, here is an operative synopsis at the top showing the typical operative synopsis and at the bottom showing the anatomic landmarks that the nerves were spared and attempts were made to spare the intercostal brachial nerve and whether or not one or more level three lymph nodes were removed and why. The next standard is in regards to melanoma. Standard 5.5 with melanoma discusses the depth of excision. So if a patient has invasive melanoma, that should include the skin, underlying subcutaneous tissue to the level of the underlying fascial plane. If it's melanoma in situ, that should include the skin and superficial subcutaneous fat. 
This should be documented in the operative summary. Also, if you look to the left of the screen, um, you can see the recommended excision margins for the different depths of melanoma. If you look at this slide here, it discusses specimen orientation. So on the left-hand side of the screen, you can see the melanoma in the center, and then a circumferential marking is made to measure the diameter, as well as an elliptical marking so that the incision can be closed nicely. If you look on the right of the screen, we the longest um, axis of the incision should be parallel to the lymphatic vessels. And you can also see that the margin has been marked as well. So here is synoptic reporting for melanoma, which should show the original Breslau thickness. So um, in this particular, um, on the right-hand side shows melanoma in situ or the invasive cancer to the tenth of a millimeter. Uh, you need to document the clinical margin from the edge of the lesion or the prior excision scar. And again, at the bottom, it discusses depth down to fascia. And if not down to the fascia, then document why. And then this is the operative synopsis. So again, typical op note synopsis at the top and the oncologic synopsis covers thickness of the lesion, the clinical margin, is measured out by the surgeon and whether or not the depth is down to fascia for invasive melanoma. The next standard pertains to colorectal cancer. And the goal with these cases is to make sure that we do a good job with uh, vascular ligation and end block lymphadenectomy. So if you look at each of these scenarios, if somebody has a right hemicolectomy, for example, for right-sided colon cancer, we want to resect the ilocolic artery and vein, and if present, the right colic artery and vein, and make sure that we have adequate lymphadenectomy with that. So the way the op note summary would go is that you have your standard operative synopsis at the top, the oncologic synopsis shows the tumor location, what the extent of the lymphovascular resection is. In this case, it was high, um, whether the iliocolic artery and vein were resected, and if the different anatomic guidance had to be listed other than the vessels, um, you need to document why. And if a patient was excluded from this, and for some reason this could not be done, we need to document why. Standard 5.7 pertains to rectal cancer, and this is for total mesorectal excision. For mid and low rectal cancers, we need to aim to resect the mesorectum four to five centimeters below the distal edge of the tumor, and the rectum one centimeter below the distal edge of the tumor. By doing this, we have a better chance of an R0 resection, better survival, and decreased local recurrence for the patient. So and if you look at these diagrams, on the left-hand side, um, you can see the patient has rectal cancer. And you can see the fascial plane, the dead on dolorous fascia, uh, which by following this plane, you can avoid uh, neural structures and other vascular and important structures. And on the right-hand side, the purpose of the diagram is to show a correct dissection on the left-hand side versus an incorrect, incomplete dissection on the right-hand side. Standard 5.7 um, is the pathology report for the total mesal rectal excision. So this is how we figure out whether our margins are good. So here, again, performed for all patients undergoing radical surgical resection for mid and low rectal cancers. And in the standard report, it should document um, the margins. Lung cancer. It's the next standard. Again, the pathology report is going to help us determine whether or not the standard was met. So when we talk about lung anatomy, remember there's considered a single order and not organ and not paired. The right lung has three lobes and the left lung has two. Cancers can arise from epithelial cells or from cells lining the alveoli. So this refers to nodal analysis of any curative intent lung resection. 
for non-small cell, small cell, and carcinoid. And because of lung screening programs, we are able to catch small cell cancers a lot earlier. So here is a summary of the TNN stages uh, for reference. But again, if you look at the nodal basins, N1 are going to be the more peripheral nodes, and um, N2 are going to be the subcarinal, and N3 is the contralateral or supraclavicular or scalene nodes. So the resection is a 1 plus 3 rule, and this is where standard 5.8 comes into play. The goal is to sample from one hilar node station and three medial sinal lymph node station. So um, that's the 1 plus 3. And in the report, it must contain lymph nodes, again, from the hilar station and three distinct mediastinal stations. This way, the hilum and the mediastinal sinum will be thoroughly staged at the time of lung resection. So this includes the wedge resection. And again, remember, the mediastinal stations are stations one through nine, the hilar stations are 10 or higher. So the diagram just demonstrating the segmental and lobar anatomy of the lung. And again, this is another diagram that shows the different stages, uh, sorry, the uh, different areas for nodal sampling. And that's it.